everybody. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from Euro Saturday 2024. We are here at Parc de Exposition, and this is day four in Paris. And I have with me Mr. Ashish Kansal, executive director, SMPP, one of the most known faces and the best known brands in defense industry in India. Welcome, Ashish, to ADU's chat room. Thank you. And you've been here for the last four days, Ashish. What is the story of SMPP at Eurosatri 2024? I think it's uh, been a good show up till now. Uh, we've had some very promising customers coming down. Uh, it's a good branding. Uh, it helps us do a good branding at the show. We've been able to release some of our most advanced products, including the world's first helmet for an armor-piercing bullets, uh, which has caught the attention of the world. Uh, India already has a very good name uh, in the international market and we have been able to take advantage of this fact that India is uh, now shining uh, on all grounds and is now known for good technology products. So rather than price, we have been able to market our products on technology. We have been able to convince our customers of the uh, high technology uh, products with uh, eye-catching features. And that's been quite helpful for us. And Ashish, you already have a very strong export market. So what have you added on to this show, on to it? This show, our primary focus has been on more high-end products. Uh, already the defense market is quite hot with uh, two wars happening in the world. Uh, there's already a shortage of products. But there are customers who are now look, uh, we are looking for those customers who are actually looking for cutting-edge technologies who are looking for products which are not there with others and that's been our primary focus for this show. And uh, what have you showcased here? We've uh, showcased one of the lightest uh, helmets which is less than 900 grams. We've showcased one of the lightest plates which is less than 800 grams uh, which beats the Niger Level 3. We've put down helmets, uh, one of its kind for which we've also been granted a patent now in the US as well would stop armor piercing bullets. And uh, you also have some other uh, jackets and things you can see outside. What are those? So uh, we've uh, added features like comfort, features like uh, sensors, which make the soldier a smart soldier. And that's uh, one of the add-on features, which will not just, uh, 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 it's a good feature for protection, but it's even more usable in terms of addressing soldier comfort and soldier concerns with regards to mobility and other factors. You already have a very strong Indian market and uh, my presumption uh, is that you also have a very strong homeland security market in India. Is that true apart from the armed forces? I think what we've been able to achieve in the last five years is soldiers confidence. Today, any Indian soldier has a confidence when he wears a product that it's worthwhile wearing this extra load on himself because it's really going to protect him. So today, if you go down uh, to our defense areas where soldiers are protect protecting our borders, our sensitive areas, they are more than willing to wear our jackets and helmets because they know it's really going to stop a bullet and it's not just a gear which they are supposed to wear. So they are wearing it more from safety than compulsion. And that's what has given us a very strong presence now in both defense and homeland security markets. Which of your uh, police forces and paramilitary forces are your customers? I think every paramilitary and police forces today are customers. We are, uh, we are uh, rather lucky to have uh, prime forces like BSF, CRPF, SSB, ITVP, any, uh, you name a force and I think they're wearing our products today. That's wonderful. And uh, you know, here, when you're here, you have a very uh, heavy competition with the already niche market in your field which is available in Europe. How do you manage that competition? See, many of the European manufacturers which you see are actually our customers because we are manufacturing all the raw materials as well in-house which gives us a very uh, large competitive edge not just in terms of pricing but unique product line. So we have many of the European armor manufacturers who buy products from us and are selling in the European market. So uh, for us it's really not per se so much of competition because we are not into a B2 product category. 
we are more focused on products which are unique which set us apart from every uh, second manufacturer and uh, keeping in mind the prime minister's clarion call of atmanirbhar bharat uh, how much of uh, your products are indian so as i just uh, mentioned you before you know we we manufacture the raw materials the core raw materials as well and the finished product so we are i would say more around uh, in 80 90% indianization level where now we only buy basic powders or basic chemicals from the market and rest everything we make it ourselves okay and uh, you know keeping in mind two major wars in the world uh, has the export market improved for you in the last few months certainly export market has certainly improved uh, with the situation in the outside world uh, plus i think a lot of it is also to do with the uh, help we are getting now from the government of india from the ministry of defense a lot of uh, improvement in the brand name of india has happened so all this has contributed uh, to the increasing export market that we see today and uh, yeah, how have you expanded into the african and south uh, american this is the latin american market latin america is actually a really large market which normally gets unnoticed we've managed to enter the latin american market with our products on the vehicle arm and aircraft arm there have been projects where we've been the only qualifier in uh, some very challenging product areas which really gave us a good brand name in the latin american market also and uh, we've already made our headway into the latin american market got some orders executed some of them very successfully and we are now looking at expanding our base in the latin american market as well as the african continent which countries in latin america are your clients at the moment we've been able to have some clients in uh, colombia mexico peru ecuador so uh, we've added some some of the major countries where uh, which are very good customer base all right and uh, when you are here you have the complete europe here with you which also includes the nordic baltics so have you got some response uh, in the form of footfall from these small countries which Absolutely. are part of node nato and expanding Absolutely you know in the today scenario even these small countries are ordering big numbers so we've had some good successful orders from com- uh, countries like Estonia and we've had a very good footfall from these nordic countries as well who are looking for these advanced products today Estonia is an order here now uh, at this show is it yeah. already existing it was an existing order they've expanded that order now that we, they've received the deliveries from us so they've added some orders all right and apart from that you also have here a very major presence of the middle east uh, so have you got some uh, footfall from them middle east has not really been so much great for us we've been able to manage some orders from uae and other countries but the, i believe that on more for resale purposes uh, other than that we've not seen much from the middle east uh, countries and southeast asia southeast asia is a really good market for us uh, consider singapore philippines korea we've been doing very well in those markets and it's uh, continues to do well for us and your supply chain uh, in india is there a very standardized supply chain which you've developed yourself or was it a existing ofb sort of a supply chain so the products we are today making i don't think ofb uh, was there in those products so uh, it's a supply chain which we created uh, over a long time and uh, ensuring quality products from a stable supply chain was one of our foremost uh, criteria and i think we achieved that quite successfully right so that was wonderful speaking with you uh, and uh, you know when we this is day 4 and uh, by the time the show ends and we'll actually come to know uh, what has been the locus standi of all the businesses you've done here and next time when we meet i'm sure you will have lots more to tell me ashish thank you very much thank you